Hey ho, let's go. Wishing everyone an awesome Wednesday. Hope you're well wherever you are in this first week of August. As usual, I am Sean Pugsley Martin. This is episode 64 of Pugsley's Pit. And as we always do this time of the show, we begin by asking you the question, where else would you rather be than right here? Boom, right now. By way of introduction, I'm a freelance sports writer for the Albany Times Union, avid sports enthusiast, big time homer for my teams with some reality, but without apologies. Uh, you can follow the show on Twitter as always at, or is it X? Now I'll call it Twitter. At Pugsley's Pit, taking the podcast, YouTube, Apple, Spotify. I'm sure we get our coffee. Later in the My World segment, a little bit in a Raiders camp on the season of uh, despair that's coming up. Maybe squeezing a call day's president, Dave Cavill. I haven't talked to him in a couple weeks, or he hasn't heard my golden voice on his answering machine because he still won't call me back. Just to remind him, him and his boss are tools. Uh, but with that, let's welcome back a friend of the show, Mr. I'm excited today. This is a good one. Mr. Chris Honorado, WNYT 13 here in Albany in the 518 and podcast host extraordinary. Mr. <laughs> Honorado, how are you today? I'm good, Sean. I'm good, man. Uh, I'm looking forward to what I believe is the best time on the sports calendar, which is, you know, playoff race, baseball, start of the NFL season, NBA training camps will be in, hockey is right around the corner. It's yes. when all four come together at once. It's beautiful. It is awesome. It is awesome. It, uh, yeah, football's coming. I, I said in the opening, I'm not really enthusiastic about the Raiders because, um, well, let's just show it. Oh, boy. It Tough is. division. Tough division. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, and incumbents up top. But the deadline was yesterday. For my team, they, we actually moved a couple guys and got a couple other players that will never get paid anything by this owner. <laughs> but I'm, I want to start first with, with the local interest teams here in the 518. you got the Mets, the Yankees, and the Red Sox. I'll give right. Steve Cohen credit. He had a plan. It went sideways from day one. <laughs> okay, he spent a lot of money. He maybe didn't think out that plan. It's been a disaster for the Mets. And what I find even more interesting is the guy spent like over $70 million to Houston and Texas just to get them to take the guys. Yeah, it was the only way they were going to get any decent prospects back, right? Like yeah. Houston and Texas weren't going to take on those salaries and give you some yeah. of their best prospects. But to me, if you're Steve Cohen, it's worth the payout because you're going to get – the number one prospect in the Astros system, and then a top 50 overall prospect uh, from the Rangers system, who just happens to be Ronald Acuna's brother. So yeah. um, it's it's the right move. This team wasn't going to win this year. And quite frankly, Sean, they weren't going to win next year the way they were constituted. You just, I, I just never believed you could lean on two 40-year-old aces and go win a World Series. I also didn't like the lineup. Now, when when it looked like they were going to have Carlos Correa as part of the team, I thought, oh, okay, there's there's length in this lineup now where yeah. the top five guys are dangerous. But I, I just didn't like the way the lineup was put together without Correa, you know, banking on, I like Starling Marte, but banking on Marte to have another career year, Mark Canna to have another career year, Eduardo Escobar to have another career year. Like it just wasn't, it just wasn't gonna happen. Um, and then I didn't like the, the pitching enough beyond the two guys at the top. So the Mets are doing the right thing here. Yeah. It's just, you know, can the fan base be patient enough for 2026 probably? Yeah, it's a, you know, I'm just thinking about, thankfully I'm not a Met fan because they got to be used to it by now. But you go back four months, five months to, to spring training and, you know, they got $380 million payroll. Steve Cohen's yeah. all in. This is the year. Look, we brought in some veteran guys, and here you are selling at the trade deadline. I can't, I can't imagine too many people could picture that uh, before the season started. No, and, and truth be told, I really thought they would hang on to Verlander. Um, yeah. Clearly, I, the offer was just, hey, we're going to give you our top prospect, and then, and then another guy a lot of people like at the low minor league level. Um, but I really did think they'd keep Verlander. Verlander has said he likes New York. Yep, I'm sure his wife likes New York. Um, keep them and then at least you're 
you can trick yourself into thinking you'll be competitive next year, right? Or at least there, yeah. there's the foundation there with Verlander and Quintana. Diaz comes back healthy at the back end. Um, but it's a, it's a reboot. It's a full reboot. And I'm surprised they didn't trade more away, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I get it. it again, it's not bad. Hey, we tried it. It didn't work, but we got to regroup and do something quick. The other story, the other side of, of New York City in the Bronx, we had Chris Vitale and Mike Nelson on from Ball Nine last week, and they squarely blame Brian Cashman for this year. Of course. But I, I also think that Yankee fans don't understand that Hal Steinbrenner is never going to spend money. Not, not the way his dad did. He's got a high payroll. He has to have a high payroll. He's a Yankee. But he's not going to go Steve Cohen anytime soon. Um, but to get two middle relievers – and then come out and say, this is the team we have. This is the team we like. We're going with our group. I don't know how you square that when you build expectations around this franchise to a fan base that it's World Series or bust every year. Yeah, I, I again, I know this would be if, if I were Brian Cashman, and I wanted to wanted to keep my job long term. I would have torn the thing down completely at this deadline and this winter. I would have made everybody other than Aaron Judge available, everybody, even Garrett Cole, I would have said to myself, I'm paying this starting pitcher who's obviously very, very good, a lot of money, what, $36 million a year I think he's making. Um, we're not winning now. We're not going to win next year the way this team is set up. Um, build this thing back up. I, I, I just, again, I, this is a roster I didn't like and I haven't liked for a long time. We saw it play out every single October the same exact way. Couldn't make productive outs, struck out way too much. Don't put the ball in play. I mean, it just it, it just wasn't a team that was well put together to win the World Series. You said World Series are bust fine. This is not about winning a division, not about winning the AL East. Exactly. And, and and I don't know what that there's going to be a quick enough fix, um, especially to your point, if Hal Steinbrenner isn't willing to spend the way his father did, uh, then you for, then you can forget about Sho Shohei Otani, right? I mean, forget it. Well, that, that was my next point. I, uh, that's going to be the, the darling story, Shohei to, to the Bronx. No. You got the judge contract, you got the Cole contract, and you got the Stanton contract. Yes. Okay. And no one's taking Stanton off your hands. Um, so what what are you going to do? And and that's what even if Shohei wanted to come to, to New York, and we don't know that, but it's not going to happen. It's going to be quiet again. And what do you do? Play Stanton in left field every day so Otani can DH? No chance. Yeah. yeah. How about how about the Red Sox? I think Hein Bloom forgets to set his alarm this time of year. The last <laughs> few years, I mean, there they are. I, I personally think they're the worst talent team in their division, but they're I what know. a game and a half out of the last wild card. And here they are. Credit to Alex Cora, who, who has shown he can manage. They've had a lot of injuries, but they did nothing, and they're counting on Chris Sale and some of these guys. Trevor Story may be back this week. It's a it's a lot to ride on on guys that are chronically injured. But I, I, I look at it this way, too. If you're Boston, I think it's just being real with yourselves. Like, we're not good enough to compete this year. So getting to the postseason as maybe the second wild card sounds nice. But is it worth, you know, giving up young talent to try to bring in rentals for a postseason that probably won't bear a lot of fruit anyways? And, and this is like the most difficult time of year to be patient because – uh, everybody wants you to do something, right? Like, hey, show us you're <laughs> you're trying to win. That's what we all yes. want to see as a fan. Um, yeah. But I'll be honest, I, I'm with you. Nobody expected anything out of Boston this year, but he said they're going to finish last, and they might end up finishing last anyway. But it's an uber competitive division. Ash and I were out at, at uh, Fenway a couple weeks ago, saw the Braves play out there. They were dreadful Atlanta. By the way, there's a, there's a rule that needs to be changed in baseball based on that game. What's that? Um, but I started talking myself into that lineup thinking, I kind of like Tristan Casas. I kind of like this guy. I kind of like that guy. Like, he's not bad. You know, they have pieces, right? I mean, it's all centered around Devers. And then they have pieces that you could kind of uh, put together with one or two other, like, really big-time players um, and maybe win. I, I, I don't know. It's uh, it's it's going to be a tough division for a long time. Baltimore isn't going anywhere anytime soon. They're very no. good. And, and again, it took a full teardown. I mean, look, they've been dreadful for years and years and years, but they did eventually just say, we are bottoming this thing out and they've hit on their draft picks. You have to give them credit for that. Okay. Even if you yeah. get the number one pick, you have to hit on them. Got to hit. Baltimore has. 
Yeah, with Rutschman and Gunnar Henderson, you know, back to back. I mean, they really haven't. I mean, they haven't even tapped the talent that's down there yet. Uh, so here's Jackson. here's the yeah, Jackson Holiday. Here's the rule that I that I, I don't even understand it. So the Braves had um, bases loaded. They were able to get one run across. Let me make sure I get this right now. Runners were on first and second. Yeah, actually, bases were loaded. Bases were loaded. Okay, soft line drive to second base. It's caught, but on the field, it's ruled that it was a trap. Okay. So the second baseman gathers the ball, runs over, taps second base, believes that he hasn't caught it based on what the umpire is saying on the field, wildly throws the ball back to first base to try to get a double play. Ball is way offline. Matt Olson is standing on third base. He runs in and scores. The Red Sox review it. The umps say, we got it wrong. He actually caught the ball. So then what do the Red Sox do? They they appeal at third. Olsen didn't tag. Well, why would he have tagged? Because the ump oh. said on the field it wasn't a caught ball. They call Olsen out. Inning ending double play. And I thought to myself, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait a minute. So, so now what do you have to do? You have to tag every possible caught baseball just to be safe. It was it was bizarre, but that needs to change because that's I've never seen that before. It's very weird. That's a tough one. No, I've never even heard of anything close to that. Not that real. You just send everybody back. Send everybody back to where they were and move on to the next batter. Yeah. All right. Speaking of the Braves, it's been a great year, right? John yeah. Murphy has settled right in. I, I knew he would do well there. Matt Olson's just just a beast. What? Where where are you as a Braves fan? Are you feeling pretty good right now? And look, October's a crapshoot. Yeah, you don't know what's going to happen. Look at the Phillies last year, going all the way to the to World Series. But uh, you, you got to be feeling pretty good. They didn't make the big splash like they usually do at the deadline. But uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. No, I mean they they Anthopolis really didn't do much. And I jokingly said to a. Uh, uh, friend in Atlanta, you know, I know he's going to add like three or four relievers because that's just what he does. And he added two, uh, Brad Hand, the most recent guy, but both relievers come from Colorado. They add Nicky Lopez, uh, an infield piece from Kansas City, um, who won't play every day. Like I literally read something online today that Lopez might just become um, a postseason bunter for them. I, that's, a, that's a nice luxury when you at the trade deadline, you're like, we just need a guy in case we have to lay down a bunt. Lay down um, a bunt. That's pretty good. It's it, they're, Look, they're banking on Max Freed coming back healthy, Kyle Wright coming back healthy. And then you'd roll, you'll, you would roll Freed, Wright, Morton, Strider, um, and Elder, who's an all-star. That would be your rotation, assuming everything kind of goes according to plan. You've got A.J. Minter coming back off the injured list, so you'd pair him with Hand, two lefties out of the bullpen. They've called up some young guys, uh, hard-throwing uh, out of the minors as well to to try to help with that bullpen. So, you know, look, if I wanted something, it was a starting pitcher because I just don't – you can't trust that Freed and Wright are both going to be healthy for the long term yep. and into October. So, But the, but what would you change about the lineup? No, you know. No. Maybe you'd like it. Maybe you don't want to play Ozuna every day at DH, and maybe you don't want to play Rosario in left field every day. There was talk about maybe Adam Duvall coming back, but um, th there just wasn't a lot that you felt like you had to or really could even justify doing. Yeah, I I love what the Braves have. I they're they're and they're a fun team. Now look, I'm a big Matt Olson's my favorite player. Love Sean Murphy, but but. The other guy, and you only mentioned him in passing reference, Ronald Acuna is yeah. – he he's the guy – like I want my teams to win in baseball, but one of the things that really I, I it bothers me is when the great players get hurt because now everyone's kind of robbed of seeing just how great these guys are, right? And Ronald Acuna had the injury the year they won the World Series, but he's, he's a beast. He really is. He's the best position player in baseball, and I don't even think it's close. Um, Otani's the best player, but if you're just taking a guy who's in the lineup every day and playing the field, it's, it's Acuna. Um, Ash and I had a little bit of like a quick, she said, Aaron judge, best right fielder in baseball. This is, you know, weeks ago when he was healthy and I went, Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Uh, I think it's Ronald, Acuna, you know, and, but, 
but it's a fun conversation to have. You get Judge who had 62 bombs last year yeah. and wins MVP, and here I am arguing that no, it's it's Ronald Acuna Jr. who who will win MVP this year if if things stay the way they are. Um, which is funny. It'll go like Acuna, Freddie Freeman, Matt Olson. Yeah, uh, right. is the way it's, it's stacked up to be right now. Yeah, Acuna is so much fun to watch, and the new rules have just made him more fun. He I, he walked twice on uh, Tuesday night, and I looked over at Ash and I said, "Just put him on second. He's going to go steal." Now it was a lefty pitcher; he didn't he actually got picked off. But <laughs> but as soon as he gets on first, Sean, yeah. you just are like, "This is great because I'm going to see a stolen base attempt." And we never saw those in the last five years from most guys. He's got 51 swipes now. Uh, as we enter August, it, it just the rules have benefited him. The pitch clock, the number of times you're allowed to throw over, and the bigger bases. It's it's fun. You know, when is the time? I didn't even realize that this was gone. I was watching some old A's clips from the 70s a couple weeks ago. Maybe they should bring it back. Remember on baseball telecast, they would go with the split screen? Oh, yeah. The yeah, yeah. Camera yeah. View with the, and then the, the first, I'm like, maybe it's time to bring those back with the way the steel has come back into the game. Yeah, or at least that one shot from the – I'm assuming a righty – or it doesn't matter. Third baseline, right, where I can see the runner yeah. just beyond in the distance from the pitcher, and I can see if he runs, and then you cut to the other shot. Um, yeah, the, you're right. The the box, that's the, the, the move. The split box. Yep. There, there were a couple other things just with the trade deadline. You know, I really like – I liked what the Cubs did. Getting Candelaria for third, holding on to Bellinger, who's got a new yeah. lease on life there. Because again, if, if you're close enough, I, I like it when the Cubs are good, right? Baseball is better when the Cubs are yeah. relevant. Wrigley Field is is just a cathedral. Um, the other team I like, Arizona, a minor move, but getting Paul Seawall to shore up that bullpen is going to make them tough. Is, is there any moves that you, you were surprised about or any moves that didn't happen? Ooh. Well, you know, look, selfishly, I at least wanted there to be Otani buzz. Yes. Right up until 6 p.m. on Tuesday. Uh, the angel shot that down about a week ahead of time. Um, you know, I, look, the angels are doing what they can to say we are serious about winning. We're yeah. going to make you the largest offer. If you choose to lose, if you choose to leave, it won't be over money. Uh, it'll be because we keep losing. Um, yeah, anything that blew, there was nothing really that blew me away where I said, this swings it. Here's what I'm interested in most now is the AL West, I think. Yeah. Um, it, it's Houston and it's Texas. Are, did the Astros getting Verlander back and now seeing Framber Valdez, former Valley Cat, throw a no hitter? Um, does that swing the AL West? Is, is, does Scherzer return to form that we didn't see this season in New York that makes the Rangers? a real viable contender, right? Like we all think it's kind of fun. Hey, Rangers are good, but yeah. anybody believing they're going to win the world series this year, doubtful. So I, you know, the angels, the Rangers and the Astros, that's kind of fun out West. Yeah. I also like getting Jordan Montgomery. He'll give you some innings uh, yeah. for the left side for the Rangers for sure. Yep. Um, you know, Houston, anytime you bring Kate up to, to town, that's a win. You know, her husband's coming along, I guess, but uh, you know, that's not a bad thing, but yeah, the West, Seattle, Seattle's three games over 500, but they didn't do a thing in the A's, well, you know, just John Fisher. So, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, look, I hope that, uh, I hope that the national league is as simple as Atlanta and Los Angeles. Yeah. Um, you know, what's surprising is San Diego thinking, Hey, just get us in. Cause they're not far out of the wild card now. No, like just, just get us in and, and let's see if our talent overwhelms people in a short series, which is very possible. It is very possible. The the the, the gap of the day has got to go to Detroit, and maybe that's just why they're Detroit. You got Eduardo Rodriguez having a nice year. He's a he's in his walk year. Yeah. He's got ten teams on his no trade contract. You spend your time dealing with the Dodgers. Wouldn't you have had that cleared with the player? Right. He vetoes that move. He doesn't want to go to L.A. But by the way, I mean, look, I don't. Okay, having not spent a lot of time in Michigan, who's picking Detroit over Los Angeles? Let's I, be honest. I, they said he wanted to stay on the East Coast to be with his family. I get that. But it's Michigan's not August. the East Coast. It's it's that's, also August. It's not the East Coast, Michigan. It has coasts of lakes, but not a, there's no coast. <laughs> the season's over in three months. Go to L.A., try and win a world title, and then sign right. on the East Coast next year. I mean, I, I'm never going to begrudge somebody for being a family man. But No, of course not. My goodness, you're right. You, L.A., you, you're going to be in the playoffs. 
no matter yeah. what you do, you're going to be in the playoffs. You got a chance right. to win something. Right. That's a curious move. Uh, the O is getting Jack Flaherty is probably a good risk. He's not love the that. guy he was a few years ago, but but it's worth a shot. I love that. I wanted him in Atlanta. He would have been my guy. I mean, I saw the talk that like Atlanta was in on Verlander potentially. I thought that's going to take too much to get him. Flaherty was the guy I would have loved to have had. Roll the dice with him. Let's see if he just has some like crazy renaissance in September and October and and leads you to another title. Hey, Bert, I wanted to talk about the Angels because they not only did they just not sell a ton, they went out, they got Giolito, they got they got a few other pieces. It's an interesting roll of the dice with with a big game. I'd love to see him in the playoffs. Um, I think a, a lot of America wants to see him play. He's out on the West Coast and a lot of his games are at night. Yeah. But boy, what a risk if he walks and you get nothing for for the greatest, one of the greatest talents, you got to you got to put him up there in MLB history, right? Given his diversity, I know. You know, my my thought on Otani was always you have to sell it to him this way: we are going to trade you because it benefits the franchise long term. Our goal is still to sign you, so we're going to send you to a team that's going to contend this year. We are then in the winter going to make you the largest financial offer out of any other team, and because of your selflessness, you have brought back a hall of prospects and maybe even some like major league ready guys yeah. that are going to help us win in 2024. You come back, Trout's healthy. Uh, we are going to win in 20, but but I think it's a hard sell. It's a hard sell to make to somebody like it's like breaking up with your girlfriend. Like, listen, honey, let's take a three month break. Okay, I need to get a little out of my system. Yeah, and then. Let's get back together for the long term. Anybody taking that relationship? Nah, I don't think I could have sold that. I wouldn't know about that. I was usually on the other end if coach wants to see him bring your playbook, but that's just me. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. just me. What, what do you see for the next few months, the the rest of the regular season? You know, you, it, the Braves, obviously, the Dodgers. Is there a World Series matchup? You could say the Braves, even though you're yeah. Homer what pick. World Series matchup would hold the most intrigue for you. As a baseball guy. As a baseball guy, Dodgers, Angels. Okay. Because, because everybody assumes, including me, that Otani's going to sign with the Dodgers. But would he do that if the Angels beat the Dodgers in the World Series? Like, would you go to the losing team who you just beat? That's a weird look. Yeah. Um, so from just kind of a baseball perspective, the storylines, the drama – Give me the freeway series of 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 L.A., uh, but obviously I want the Braves involved. Um, there's nothing doing for me out of the AL Central. No. Uh, the Orioles and the Rays and the Blue Jays. I mean, so you know we could run it back with Braves Astros, but I think Braves Rangers might be fun. A little it different. Rangers haven't been the World Series in more than a decade when they lost back to back. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, TV ratings would be in the tank. Baseball would never want that. So I, Dodgers, Angels would be fun. But what about the Orioles? Do you th have they caught America's attention, or can they no. a, with their young players in the too early? Yeah. I mean, you can't walk down the street and ask anybody, do you know who Adley Rutschman is? I have no clue. It probably plays, like, bass in some rock band touring, <laughs> uh, you know. Um, heck of a player, but – National stage at this point, if baseball doesn't get at Atlanta or LA, as in the Dodgers, yeah. I think they'll be, I think they'll be upset. Yeah, you can't sell never... Milwaukee. You know, it's. Yeah, I don't see that with them. Them and the Reds. The Reds are a nice story, good for them. Ellie De La Cruz is a good selling point, but yeah. they didn't do, they yeah. didn't really do much either. Yeah. So in the American, you asked me about the about the Orioles. I mean, I, it, to me, it just feels like it's got to be Houston. Yeah, oh, I hope not. I hope not. I'm done with the garbage. But don't you? But won't you watch to root against them? That's part of it too, as a fan. Well, it is. I just, I in sports vernacular, I hate them. Yeah. I yeah. It's, it's just it's like watching. It's it's hard for me to square that. But yeah, they they bring a value, especially with with Cade up up since husband back in town. Right. Um, yeah. So there is a little more of a more of an intrigue there. So. Hey, before I let you go, <clears throat> two things. One, yeah. longtime Packer fan, first time you don't have a future Hall of Famer behind center since the early 90s, mid-90s. 
Yeah. Maybe yeah. Jordan Love. Early but how, how does this feel this year with without Aaron Rodgers? I will just quickly say nobody knew Aaron Rodgers was going to be a Hall of Famer when he took over and they went six and ten in his first year. He threw a ton of interceptions. It was not pretty. I remember that season pretty well. But I am as interested and maybe more so in this year than I've been in the last handful of years, to be honest with you. Rodgers always gave you a chance to win every week, and you knew that and you appreciated that. But it always felt like at some point they were going to run into something in the postseason that tripped them up and they weren't going to deliver on all the promise and, and anticipation. Now you have almost no expectations. And so, like, if they somehow in 17 games go 9-8, and eight, which is awful. You don't want to be mediocre because you need good picks. But um, I just am kind of interested now. Nobody knows anything about Jordan Love. At least with yeah. Rodgers, Favre got banged up a couple of times, and you got glimpses of what Rodgers could. We haven't seen anything from Jordan Love, really, other than the one start in Kansas City when Rodgers had COVID. So I'm I'm in on this year. I'm not saying they're going to make the playoffs, but but I'm, I'll am i be watching as much, maybe more, than I have in the last few years for sure. It's something yeah. new. It's a change of direction, right? New intrigue. Right. And, right. Yeah. The unknown. Yeah. You've been in the media. You've been on TV for, for a number of years now. What were your thoughts on Sean Payton shredding Nathaniel Hackett? Um, that was just really come on, man. Yeah. That, that was, that was, that was a little dirty pool. Yeah. I, I, yes, it was. I don't like Hackett's response though. It's like he broke the code. Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> you know, like, let's not pretend, let's not just put it out there that you have this fraternity where nobody's allowed to say anything about the other one. Um, I don't like what he did, but I get what he did. He's he's trying to make Russell Wilson feel the love. And and that was one heck of a way to try to do it. And Sean Payton's been a little, like, gruff at times in other areas, too, yeah. right? He's not afraid to kind of speak his mind and be who he is. So um, I didn't love it, but I really was not turned off by it the way so many other people were. Yeah. It, it just tell us about your podcast. You guys just had an announcement. Yeah, man. Out. Why don't you go with that and where, where can they find you? Yeah. So it's called Honorado and Miller. Very original. Um, and it, uh, yeah. it live streams every Thursday night at 6 30 PM Eastern on news channel 13's Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And then if you live in the capital region of New York, uh, it airs a couple of times over the weekend as well. You can find that on your guide. Um, but yeah, we're, we're much like you, Sean. We're, we're just sports fans, man. We want to kick it around for an hour, bring on some guests and, uh, and have a good time. So we do that every week. That's awesome, my friend. Thank you, buddy. Hey, it's great getting caught up with you. We'll talk to you soon, I hope. Always with you, man. Thank right, you, dude. Chris. We'll see you. Good to be on with you. Thanks, Sean. I know. That was Mr. Chris Honorado. Uh, Honorado and Miller. For those that don't know, uh, the Miller in that is, is Ashley Miller, um, Chris's wife, who's, who's been on the show a number of times, and uh, my former co-host with Eric McDowell on Eminem and M Across the Board, our former podcast um, from years back. Let's go to the My World segment. Uh, spirited practice yesterday in Vegas, if, uh, if what I read was accurate. It looked like Mac, Max Crosby was locking up with uh, rookie tight end Michael Mayer a um, little bit. I said that was a highlight as, as Max welcomed the uh, the former Notre Damer. Um, but it's good to see everybody on the field. Uh, Garoppolo, teammates are saying all the right things about him. Um, you know, we've heard some good things and bad things in practice. It's just practice. It's just early. But um, – Try and get optimistic um, about the season, though. I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, I saw a few things on, on Twitter. A few Raider fans questioning Josh Jacobs for, for turning down a $12 million offer from the Raiders. Look, here's the deal, man. That, that number's fine for one year. It's more than the tag, which is 10 plus. But that's not about one year. For Josh Jacobs, he's 25. And with the way the NFL is treating running backs right now, this is going to be Josh Jacobs' biggest contract year. You know, he could go sign a three, four-year deal somewhere, and he's going to get paid, and then he may have to do it again in a couple of years. But a couple of years in NFL terms, 28's older for running back, and the money's not going to be there. you got, you got to respect Jacobs' position um, here. He's trying to maximize his earning potential, and this is his time to do it. And you know what? The, you blame the Raiders, can blame themselves. Um, these morons here – um, not me, sorry. Not, maybe that's a Freudian slip, but they um 
they're the ones that got rid of this fifth year guarantee and they're the ones that caused this and now they got to deal with it and none of it matters at this point anyway because they can't negotiate again until after the season so expect jacobs to hit town uh the monday before the opener and and, and sign his tag and come in and i just hope he's in shape because usually a lot of times guys that miss camp come in they start to play, they get hurt, they're not. You know, working out on your own is one thing, but training with the team is another. Hopefully that doesn't happen here. He's not going to sit out. It, it makes no sense. All he does is get a year older. He loses a year of revenue-generating time in his career, and um, the tag doesn't go away. So you either play on that 10-plus million tag this year, or you sit out and you play on it next year. Um, so hopefully it is what it is. Hopefully he gets in, and we see the same Josh Jacobs as last year. Uh, last Tuesday night, the Unite the Bay. Shout out to uh, to the Giants fans um, for joining in Ace fans and then chanting the uh, the Summer of Cell, as it were. Uh, it gained momentum in San Francisco. We carried over into Denver over the weekend in Colorado with the A's out there. And there's been some Giants fans uh, chanting Sell the Team as well as the top of the fifth. Appreciate uh, their support through this, um, you know, at the, at the top of the fifth. And, you know, the, the thing that I wanted to make sure I, I got today was um, we're going to call Dave Cavill as, uh, as we speak. But the thing that blew my mind, there's a the A's group, the 68s, Oakland 68s, and, and, and the other groups out there that are trying to create awareness and try and save this team. They announced another Unite the Bay Night uh, this Saturday. Uh, in Oakland against the Giants. Please hold while I try to connect you. Uh, Mr. Cavill's not answering his phone. So after this is announced, the A's announced that they're raising ticket prices for that game only. So an average ticket price of twenty-seven dollars is now forty-four for that one game only. It's just the, the slime and sleaze, the level of slime and sleaze in in the East Bay um, is remarkable. Absolutely remarkable. So that's what you get. You know, you bring in a clown. Your call has been forwarded to oh, voicemail damn. for David Cavill. No one is available to take your call. At the tone, please record your message. When you've finished recording, you may hang up or press the pound key for more options. Dave, buddy, Sean Martin, Albany, New York calling. Pugsley's Pit. How you been? You haven't, I don't know, 18 calls now? Call me back, buddy. Look, I'm just curious. On the 5th, you hear another Unite the Bay Night to further embarrass you guys. Not that you guys need to be embarrassed anymore because your own actions are, are embarrassing. You've, you've, your degree from Stanford has completely devalued the entire uh, university there. and I'm sure they, they appreciate it. But uh, raising ticket prices for one game, you guys are slime. Jeez, just sell the team. Tell When you get done cleaning Mr. Fisher's pool, just tell the man, sell the team. Let's move on. You'll find a job somewhere, buddy. Pool cleaner. Open your own business. Hey, I got a good, big, good bookkeeping uh, company here in Albany can help you with your pool cleaning business. We can do it remote. There's no borders. There's no oceans here in the internet. So I got for you. I got a good referral for you, buddy. So uh, yeah, I'm your guy. Bye now. Oh, Dave, he's never going to answer the phone. Uh, anyhow, let's uh, let's go to my shameless plug of the week with uh, dearly